Hi there, my name is Jackie Decker, and this is an introduction to number talks. If you've never done a number talk before, this video is for you. What is a number talk? Number talks are really conversations between students in your class and the teacher, and they're around a computation problem, sometimes an image, that has been carefully chosen so that we can get specific strategies coming out in the classroom that are really focused around relationships between numbers and number theory. And it's when students are discussing and defending and reasoning about their solutions and strategies that they're able to build a deeper conceptual understanding of the ideas in math. How do I facilitate one? Well, first of all, we want our students sitting or standing near the teacher. They might be in a semicircle, they might be on the carpet, but it's really important that they don't have pencils and paper, no calculators, no other tools. And the teacher then writes a question on the board. If it's a computation, it's horizontally on the board, or maybe they show an image for a chosen amount of time. And then students have quiet think time. It's really important that students only use hand signals and they don't raise their hand. What do I mean when I say hand signals? Well, they might have their fist to their chest to say, I'm thinking about that. When they have an answer, they're gonna quietly raise their thumb. So other students can't see it, but the teacher can see it. This means that students continue to do that thinking. We know that in the classroom, if someone raises their hand, a lot of students stop thinking because they know that one student already knows the answer, so we're done. If we can create a culture where students are comfortable in that quiet think time and comfortable waiting for other students to think, then we are valuing slow, deep thinking, not quick, superficial thinking. So if they have an answer and their thumb is up, we can wait until all other students have an answer, and we encourage students at that time to be thinking of more than one strategy, at which time they're going to raise another finger and another finger so that students all have something to do during that quiet think time. It might be awkward at first, and you might actually have to acknowledge that with your students and say, this quiet think time is a little bit awkward right now, but we're going to build our stamina and we're going to get better at this with practice. Once students have all had enough quiet think time to get in on the thinking of your number talk, then the teacher is going to record all possible answers. You might get one answer, you might get several answers, and you're going to write them all down. A lot of people do that in the corner of the board, and then students one by one are going to share their strategies for how they solved the problem. The teacher is going to record those strategies. You might ask some students, ask the student if you are recording it correctly, and the teacher then notice and names the math in each one. If you're not sure how to talk to students during this time, here are some different ways to promote thinking. You might say, what answers did you get? Or who'd like to share their thinking now? Oh, how did you figure that out? Did anyone else do that? That's when our students are gonna use that hand signal where they're gonna say, yeah, I got the same one. We might ask students who'd like to challenge that strategy or did you do it another way? Or you might ask a student to revoice and explain a different student's strategy in different words. If you're looking for this list of questions and prompts, you can find it in the curriculum matters that the math team has created, and I'll show you later in the video where you can find that. We're gonna try a number talk now so you can feel how it feels for students. And we're gonna begin with something called a dot talk. A lot of people start with a dot talk to establish the routine and build student stamina, and also to feel that quiet think time and to build the understanding that various strategies are valuable and have something to teach us. So I'm gonna show you an image just for a few seconds, I want you to think about how many dots you see and how do you see them. Keep that image in your mind. And in the classroom, as your teacher, I would now say, can you please tell me how many dots you see and how you saw them? And I would say to another student, did you get the same number of dots? How did you see those dots? And then I'm gonna record those. Here are some ways that different students saw these dots during a dot talk and the way that a teacher recorded those. In this case, they were using an app on their iPad. Uh, you can also have lots of copies of this on big pieces of paper that you just tape up to your board and record on with different colors. Why do we do number talks anyway? Well, we want our students to develop accuracy, efficiency, and flexibility with their mental math skills. We really want to build on the key foundational ideas in math, things like composition and decomposition, understanding place value and systems of tens, and key quantity and counting concepts are important in and of themselves for students to understand number, but it's really helpful for them also to know how numbers behave, and it can link to other mathematical thinking as students go on in their math journey. 
What might it look like? Well, it really depends on where your students are in their learning right now. So it might be an image like a dot talk that we just did. It might have those dots arranged into five frames or 10 frames. Or you might have a wreck and wreck with the beads organized in a particular way to elicit particular strategies. It might be based on a computation, which you're going to write horizontally. So you might have an addition or a subtraction. You might have a multiplication or a division problem. If you're looking at fractions, decimals, and percents, there's a whole book about that, and it has problems like this that you can use as a number talk. We're going to try anticipating what students might do with a number talk now. So I want you to pause the video and think about all the ways that your students might solve this particular problem using mental math. I want you to think about the strategies students would use. And I also want you to think about the representations they would use to make their thinking visible. So pause the video and anticipate all the ways that students are gonna solve this problem. This is how a pair of teachers anticipated all the ways a student might solve this problem. Yours might look like this, or you might not be sure of all of these different ways of doing it, what they're called, and you might wanna do some learning in that. If you do, we have a place for you to go. We have an insert to our curriculum matters that looks like this. It has addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It's found in that curriculum matters I was talking about before, and this is where you can find it. You're gonna go into elementary, and once you are in the elementary unit, you're gonna look for number talks, which is right here. I'm gonna open the drop down there, and I see right at the top, number talks curriculum matters. I'm gonna click on that. A preview will show up in the panel here. If you'd like to open that in a new tab so you can do things like zoom in and print that, you're gonna click on those three dots. You're gonna open that in a new tab. If you're looking for more resources to plan number talks for your students, begin with the curriculum matters that we've shown you. And if you wanna to go to the original sources that we've really used to understand number talks, how to plan them for our students, how to anticipate student thinking, what sort of sequence we might be looking at. Number Talks by Sherry Parrish and Making Number Talks Matter by Kathy Humphreys and Ruth Parker are excellent resources that should be found in your school. Knowing which computations and which numbers you should be working with at different grade levels, that information is going to be found in our curriculum documents. And for more information about how Number Talks support that, focus on the fundamentals in math, look at the teacher guide produced by the ministry last year that you can find online. When you begin planning number talks for your students, you really wanna think about the purpose of your number talk and what the barriers might be for your students. You may start out by using number talks to establish a routine, and then you'll build stamina for those number talks to get longer, though 15 minutes should really be your upper limit. You might be working on transitions and fostering that positive math culture in your classroom then you can go on to build that conceptual understanding of math concepts. So take some time now and do some purposeful planning and plan a number talk for your students. Don't forget to think about what's the connection to your math program or the math curriculum or where your students are in their learning. Take the time to anticipate all the different strategies and visual tools and representations your students might use. Use some resources to help you with that and really plan a number talk that's going to elicit particular strategies that you think would be helpful for your students. Good luck with your number talks and thanks for listening.